Hello students, we have completed JavaScript last time. Now we are going to start with a new chapter. This is e-commerce and e-governance. Okay, so this chapter is completely theoretical. There are no programs in this. And the, we know a lot many things about e-commerce also. So let's see. E-commerce stands for electronic commerce. This statement, the first statement is many times asked for your fill in the blanks, okay? E-commerce stands for dash. Next, e-commerce is a part of business. Sorry, commerce is part of business. Commerce means selling and buying of goods. So, this is the definition of commerce. Again, it is asked for fill in the blanks. Can be asked for true and false words. The most popular activity on web is shopping. So, this we all know. We are also on the web every time doing online shopping and all, which is very much used these days with the advancement of internet with the coming up more websites more technologies the shopping on the web has become a recent activity and more popular one next e-commerce is defined as a process of buying and selling of goods and services using electronic mediums such as internet so this is the definition of e-commerce if you asked Define e-commerce, you have to write the definition as it is, without changing any words. And when you are writing the definitions, the two important terms that must be included over in your definition are goods and services. So, you have to include goods and services and you also have to include electronic medium. Now, goods means the items that we are purchasing. Services our services if we are booking from the web for example that if we want the refrigerator to be repaired and we are booking that service online we are calling the technician online to come and repair the refrigerator so basically we are taking a service and that too using electronic media so this becomes a part of e-commerce next point it is referred as paperless exchange of business information using email and electronic fund transfers. So, the information is exchanged electronically. The funds are transferred electronically. There is no physical transfer. Online, you all are transferring your money. Online, you all are sending all the information. Okay. So, this is the paperless exchange. Remember this also. It can be asked for your fill in the blanks again. So, this is about e-commerce. Let's go and check the differences between traditional commerce and e-commerce. Traditional commerce means going to a physical market in the neighborhood when we are going to a market and we are buying of goods, that time we are using traditional commerce. E-commerce is commerce that we are doing on the web. Okay. So, coming to the first point, traditional commerce focuses on the exchange of products and services through personal interactions so it is manual now what happens is if i want a product or if i want some service i am going to the physical market to a shop to buy that so if at that time there is a physical contact between the shopkeeper and the person who is going for shopping and thus it is termed as manual manually the person you are uh, telling the order manually the person is giving you manually you're paying it so all this is happening manually that is why it is manual okay now in e-commerce trading activities are online via internet and be considered as automatic now when we are doing all this online when we are doing e-commerce at that time there is no person sitting besides uh, there is no person whom we are giving the order it is just a machine where we are performing some kind of clicks. So, all this is automated. Okay. Using automatic machines, using the programs, using the coding, we are placing our order and we are getting the deliveries. Okay. So, there is no manual part. There is only automatic uh, commerce that is happening. Second point. Traditional commerce is limited to business hours, mostly during the day. E-commerce is 24 by 7. It can be done any time, day or night. Okay, so now what happens in traditional commerce? The market is open for some particular hours. If anybody wants to do shopping, 
they have to go in that particular pass and generally it is during day no shopkeepers opening the stores for us in during night so we have to do our shopping during day but in e-commerce it is not so you can do shopping any time irrespective of day irrespective of night it depends on when you are free whenever you have time you can go and shop okay the third point as far as consumer interactions are concerned traditional commerce provides face to face interactions e-commerce can be termed as screen to face interactions okay so now i think you've understood but still um, when we are going to traditional market we are talking to a person there is a person standing right in front of us whom we are interacting so there is a face to face interaction but the reverse happens in e-commerce in e-commerce there is nobody standing in front of you so you cannot communicate you are just using your screen and yourself so in e-commerce it is screen to face interaction in traditional commerce it is face to face interaction now next point traditional commerce is limited to particular geographical location e-commerce is global and has no physical limitations so this is completely true and a very uh, ad very advantage on the e-commerce side in e-commerce a person sitting anywhere even if we are sitting in pune we can order goods from delhi so that is possible because of the global reach and in traditional commerce if i want to buy some items if i want to shop then i have to go to a market which is present in my neighborhood i cannot get up any time and go to delhi to shop okay so there are geographical constraints in traditional commerce but in e-commerce if there are no geographical constraints it is present globally across the globe okay next point modes of payment in traditional commerce include cash check and credit card in e-commerce modes of payments are bank transfers credit card e-wallet mobile payments and more so in traditional commerce we generally use cash checks credit cards bank transfers are never used these days however we are using e-wallets and mobile payments in traditional commerce stores but the general situation is it is more often used in e-commerce okay so e-commerce the modes will be bank transfers credit cards wallets mobile payments your uh, different methods of paying next point goods and delivery of services is instant with traditional commerce in e-commerce delivery of goods or services takes some time so in traditional commerce if i want to buy some item i want to buy a shop for something i go to the market i go to the shop get it instantly pay and get it okay but in e-commerce if i want to buy some item then i have to wait for a day or two for the delivery i will go i will place the order my delivery might take a day or two to come to me okay so there is a lag of time in e-commerce but in traditional commerce the delivery is instant last point traditional commerce scope is local e-commerce scope is global so we have already discussed the scope in traditional commerce only the people who are locally residing in the neighborhood they go to the market they buy the goods and hence the scope is local in e-commerce globally anybody from anywhere can reach to any market any shop and they can buy things okay so this is the global and the local scope this question uh, can be asked for two marks difference between traditional and e-commerce now when we are asking two marks questions it is only four points are more than enough it's not necessary to write all the points however the points that we have seen just now can be asked for your fill in the blanks mcqs so you even in maths the following they will be asked so you must know all the points but in question answers if it is two marks question you must write four points okay 
So this is about your differences and definition of e-commerce.